Hi everyone, happy Friday again. I'm Natalie Irwin, Director of Stakeholder Engagement here at Efficiency Canada in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, also known as uh, the Unceded Territories of the Algonquin Nation. Um, welcome to our last discovery session for the summer of 2021. Uh, we'll be taking a break for August and returning after the long weekend in September. Uh, but not to worry, don't panic. We do have a number of fun things planned for, uh, for you on the usual Friday noon Eastern time slot. We actually have some unprofessional networking series, including LinkedIn Bingo, Podcast Club, Mindfulness Sessions, and just plain old regular networking too. Um, I hope you can join us. Uh, people are actually still talking about the fun that they had last year um, and the con connections that they made during the August unprofessional networking last year. So be sure to sign up for those from our website. But back to today. So before we get started, a reminder to everyone that our guest speakers will present for approximately 20 minutes and then we'll open the floor to questions. Please use the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen or wait until the end, raise your hand and I will unmute you and you can ask your question yourself. Um, we have a hard stop at 12.45 p.m. Eastern time so that everyone can finish their lunch or breakfast or afternoon snack, depending on where you are in the country. And without further ado, I am pleased to welcome back Yasmin Abraham, founder of Empower Me and Grant Mooney, Program Outreach and Marketing Coordinator for BC Ministry of an Energy of Mines and Low Carbon, and um, sorry, BC Energy, BC Ministry of Energy Mines and Low Carbon Innovation, new name, completely threw me off there, um, who are going to share how Clean BC is ensuring BC and multicultural communities are included and supported in the Better Homes Rebate Program. Thank you so much for joining us, Grant, and welcome back, Yasmin. Thanks, Natalie. Yep, that, uh, the new name is quite a mouthful. Um, nice to be here. Um, Hi, everybody. Like Natalie said, my name is Yasmin Abraham. I'm co-founder of the Cambo Energy Group. We are a social enterprise that focuses on designing and delivering equity-based solutions to reduce energy poverty and improve housing to communities that are historically underprioritized. Through our two programs, Empower Me and Community Power, we work with Indigenous nations, lower-income households, immigrants, and new Canadians. I'm talking to you today from the traditional unceded and unsurrendered territories of the Musqueam and Tsleil-Waututh First Nations. And I acknowledge my own responsibility in dismantling colonial systems and my own privilege in benefiting from them as a settler on this land. Um, land acknowledgements are part of our understanding, the long standing history that has brought us to reside on this land and to seek to understand our place within that history. Today, we're talking about multicultural, multilingual, and immigrant communities. So I'd like to encourage us all to think about our own ancestors, because for 95.1% of us, at some point in our history, our ancestors were also immigrants to Canada. They had to understand a new way of doing things. They had to learn it. They may have had to learn a new language, learn how to live in their new Canadian homes. And maybe for some of us who are more recent immigrants, they may have had to try apply for a heat pump rebate. If you're comfortable, and if you'd like to, please share in the chat the land that your family and ancestors are from. While you're doing this, I'll share my own ancestor history. So my mother's family is English and can trace their family back to the 18th century in England. So just about as English as you can get. My father's side of the family is originally from the Gujarat region of India. And then and they immigrated to East Africa at the turn of the century. This is a picture of a boat called a Dow, in which my great great grandfather traveled from India to Zanzibar in. And when he got there, he didn't have anything. And so he collected firewood on the beaches of Zanzibar to sell to make money uh, to feed his family. So thinking about this and talking about this, I think it really helps us to remember that for anyone who's not indigenous, that at some point, someone in our family was an immigrant to Canada. A little bit more about Empower Me. So we are a multi-award winning program we developed in 2012 as a response to a gap in the market, where we recognized many customers when were unable to take advantage of energy efficiency programs and services. Empower Me is a grassroots program centered on the lives of people of color, immigrants, and newcomers. We hire energy mentors who are members of the community 
who provide education and support to increase energy literacy, encourage behavior change, and support program uptake. All activities are translated, contextualized, and delivered in trusted spaces like churches, mosques, and temples. We are one of Canada's longest running energy efficiency programs, and next year we'll be celebrating 10 years of continuous programming. In that time, we've worked with over 60,000 people, we've delivered 520 workshops, provided education to over 7,000 people, and hired over 40 members of the community, often as their first Canadian work experience. I'll hand it over to Grant to talk a little bit about Clean DC. Thanks, Yasmin, that's great. Um, <clears throat> hi, everyone. Uh, so Clean BC was launched in 2019 uh, with goals to help conserve energy and reduce greenhouse gas emissions in British Columbia. It also has goals to reduce, reduce pollution from industry, support, support cleaner transportation, reduce emissions from waste and landfills, as well as support and create clean energy jobs. Clean BC will help us to use more clean and renewable energy and how we get around, heat our homes, fuel our industry, and will set us on a path to a cleaner, brighter future. Uh, next slide, Yasmin. Uh, the program, the Clean BC Better Homes program was launched in October, 2018. It was actually launched just before the Clean BC was announced. It's been in market now since that time and is doing quite well. It is uh, run by the Ministry of Energy Mines and Low Carbon Innovation through the province. The program is jointly funded by the Government of British Columbia and the Government of Canada through the Low Carbon Economy Leadership Fund. And it has integrated offers of financial rebates for residential customers looking to make energy efficient upgrades to their homes. The program is in partnership with BC's utility providers, BC Hydro and Fortis BC, as well as municipal governments throughout the province. The goal of the program is to accelerate retrofits that help households reduce greenhouse gas emissions and energy use. Through the installation of highly efficient heating equipment and building envelope improvements. Next slide. Thank you. The, uh, the Clean BC Better Homes program has worked with Empower Me since 2018 to ensure all British Columbians can access information and programs to support energy efficiency upgrades to their homes. Since then, and through the pandemic, we have worked together to provide more fulsome and equitable support for those seeking information in navigating the website and accessing energy coaching in various languages, such as Cantonese, Mandarin, Punjabi, and Farsi. Next slide. The Clean BC Better Homes program supplies free energy coaching services for homeowners, contractors, commercial building owners, and managers in BC. Energy coaches are trained in energy, as an energy efficiency specialists who provide building science-based information about options and opportunities to improve the energy efficiency of their home or building. They're available to answer questions at all stages of the homeowner, homeowner's energy improvement project. And it'll help them um, ensure accessibility. It'll, it'll, it'll ensure accessibility for all British Columbians. Empower Me and CLEBC have worked together to create a service offering that addresses the barriers to our multicultural communities. I'm gonna pass it back to Yasmin, thank you. Thanks, Grant. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about BC and our diversity here in this province. Uh, so we are the most ethnically diverse province in Canada. BC is home to residents who can trace their origins back to more than 200 countries or regions. Uh, BC is the home to the largest pop proportion of visible minorities in Canada, with 36% of BC's population self-identifying as a visible minority in the 2016 census. People of Chinese, South Asian, and Filipino origins account for 75% of the visible minority populations, reflecting the largest current immigrant groups in BC. In 1993, British Columbia's Multiculturalism Act was built on the aspiration of creating a multicultural society free from racism, where individuals are treated with respect and dignity, and all British Columbians have equal opportunity to participate in the community. 
Canada also has a commitment to multiculturalism. In 1988, the Canadian Multiculturalism Act was the first of its kind in the world. It enshrined into law the federal government's commitment to promoting and maintaining a diverse multicultural society. This week, the federal government is holding a summit on anti-racism to inform their ongoing strategy today. So Queen BC and Empower Me focused on four main areas to support and encourage participation in Better Homes programming, language, trust, awareness, and education. Now, language might be an obvious one, and often the answer we hear to this is translation, which is good, but it's really only half of the answer. In our experience, translation quality can leave a lot to be desired. And we often say cheap translation is actually really expensive because the impact a bad translation is poor understanding and poor uptake and a clear signal to the customer that the service or product is just not for them. Even when materials are translated, they often still live within English only websites supported with English only English speaking customer service agents and are frequently translated word for word without considering the cultural context, literacy, learning style and motivations of the community. Now we've all seen signs like this when we used to travel and we usually have a little chuckle and a laugh at the bad translation. And, you know, I think we really get the feeling from reading these signs that English readers are the second or even the third priority here. Uh, English speakers are not the main target audience because if they were, the translations would be accurate. One example in the efficiency world is the word efficient, which is often translated into the Punjabi words that mean effective or proficient concepts that do not quite capture the true essence of efficiency. There are words, phrases, and concepts in every language that get lost in translation, both to and from English, which is why translations should always consider the cultural and community context. An added barrier is the inability for native speakers to read and write in their native languages. For example, for many, Punjabi, Hindi, and Gujarati are, are languages learned at home and not formally at school. As a result, many only speak these languages and are unable to read or write them. This renders a lot of translated materials ineffective unless someone is there to help translate them. Trust. Um, many immigrants to Canada face challenges to effective social and economic integration. These challenges and discrimination create and give rise to insular communities with low levels of trust for governments and institutions who are perceived as authorities. For efficiency programs, this means that many just don't believe a government or utility would give them free money to upgrade their home, or don't believe they'll actually get the money if they do apply. Maybe it's going to run out by the time their application is submitted, and then they'll be out of pocket. Lots of people we work with are afraid of applying for rebates and programs for fear that someone from the government will come to their home and discover an illegal rental suite. Many don't trust there won't be hidden fees or extra taxes, and it's just not worth the risk to them to apply for programs that has the community asking, what's the catch? Empower Me and Clean BC work together to create an established trusted source to educate community members of the government's role in energy efficiency programs. That builds trust and that encourages program participation. Awareness. So beyond the language issue, many groups have their own news, media, and information channels that they seek information. These sources of information are often separate and different than those used by mainstream customers, with many in the target market considering mainstream Canadian media less reliable and more likely to contain fake news. Many seek out sources of information they consider, consider to be more trustworthy, often looking for information relevant to their own community and provided by people from their own community. Word of mouth from people who are trusted members of the community is king or queen. Clean BC and Empower Me utilize appropriate and effective media and communication channels that are relayed through customer trusted community members. Education. So a foundational gap that prevents many from taking part in programs is understanding how these programs might benefit them. Without the understanding and knowledge of Canadian homes, most immigrants and newcomers struggle to make the connection between the structure of their home, their own behavior, and the amount of energy their home uses and their energy bills. I was speaking to somebody this week from the community who likened it to the fact that many immigrants don't invest in RESPs for their kids. Not because they can't, but because for many where they grew up, the price of education was affordable. They don't know how expensive Canadian education really is and therefore they aren't motivated to take advantage of services or programs like RESP. 
The same is true for efficiency programming. Without a fundamental awareness and understanding of energy efficiency and the associate benefits, there's very little reason to consider participating in programs. Basic energy literacy information is a fundamental requirement that must be established to drive participation in programming. Clean BC and Empower Me address these focus areas with a white gloved concierge service that provides the same support as the general population, but designed for the unique needs of this market. We do this by providing energy literacy, program information, energy efficiency coaching, rebate information, bill support, and customer service. All of this is delivered through trusted community members, available as, call, as a call center on Rocket with mentors who speak many different languages available at the other side of the phone, text, video chat, or email to answer questions and provide support. Mentors also deliver online in-language workshops where folks can come and ask questions in a trusted and safe space. Support is delivered holistically, and I see a question in the chat about this. This includes municipal, provincial, and federal information. And the impact is that the 1.4 million multicultural and multilingual British Columbians now have the same level of support and service that native English speaking Canadians do. And as a result, they're now taking advantage of Clean BC programming and rebates. So Grant and I are gonna go through some of the trends and insights and learnings uh, that we've had over the last few months. Um, the biggest thing we're really seeing is the need for support of how to apply for programs. There are multiple programs. How do we stack them? How do we fill out all these forms? What information is required? And why is the government asking me this? It may seem simple, simple to many, but filling out this information can be really scary for some. They don't wanna get it wrong. And when English is not your first language, it can take two or three times the time to make sure these concepts are understood and information is accurate on forms. We of course get lots of questions about what types of upgrades to make heat pumps, high efficiency furnaces, air conditioners. Uh, during the heat wave in BC a couple of weeks ago, we had lots of conversations about air conditioning, but nobody was asking about heat pumps. They would say, I want cooling. Why are you talking to me about a heat pump? Interestingly, in China, a heat pump is referred to as a quote unquote, cooling and heating compressor. We often explain that this is the same device as a heat pump and is really a good example of how a straight word for word translation just won't convey the concept. We help a lot of folks find the right contractor. Community referrals are key. People want contractors who speak their language and know their community. And this is the same for energy advisors. Lots and lots of questions about bills and how to read them and why they're so high. In this case, we walk people through what their charges are, how they might be able to reduce them and suggest programming and workshops they might want to attend. Well, Grant is going to talk a little bit about our impacts and insights to date. Excellent. Thanks, Yasmin. Um, Clean BC Better Homes and Empower Me are providing a service that is needed given the van vast landscape of funding and rebates available to homeowners. As much as we try and make these programs as easy as possible, we know that it can be a convoluted, difficult process. And this, this is support is obviously needed. Trying to understand what program you may be eligible for and meeting those program requirements can be difficult. Empower Me helps and supports homeowners through this process. We appreciate the language services that Empower Me provides. We've recently had requests from organizations that work with newcomers to British Columbia. We were able to work with Empower Me and Yasmin on this request as they know our programs to provide support with online workshops. As well, during the pandemic, the province completed outreach in multiple languages. So we realized that linguistics and culturally appropriate services are vital to, the, to adequately reach all residences and in all communities. Back to you to finish this off, Yasmin. Thanks, Grant. Okay, so just a few learnings that I hope will help others on the call. Um, we really have found that a trusted community-based approach is key. Uh, just don't underestimate the barriers that are removed when communications are delivered by the community themselves. Education is the key to program recruitment. For example, we always begin conversations about explaining what installation is, for example, and how it impacts the energy bills and comfort before suggesting that residents take advantage of a program to update it. This is the same across the spectrum, including low-income programming. 
people need to understand why they should care and how it's going to benefit them, even if that program is free. It's critical that the, pro the information we provide is unbiased and technology and fuel agnostic. We as Empower Me cannot be viewed as a government mouthpiece. The moment the community thinks we're trying to sell one thing over the other, we will lose their trust. It's also important that we're able to meet the community where they are, whether that's text, social media channels, like WeChat and Telegraph and online messaging services. These services have really been key to connecting with the community effectively. And finally, delivering holistic messaging is so critical. Uh, residents do not silo programs the way the governments and utilities do. We can't just say, oh, we can't answer your question about the Greener Homes Grant program, or sorry, we can't talk about that efficiency programming. We need to understand the entire landscape to help the homeowner take advantage of all the programming that's available to them. And finally, I think at the end of the day, one of the biggest impacts that we're all really proud of is the fact that communities really do see this service as a direct demonstration of equity and inclusion. Similar to those translations we looked at earlier, when you have a service that's designed specifically for you in a way that addresses your needs, communities feel valued and included in government policies and programs. So that's it. Thank you uh, for listening. Hopefully that was helpful. Looking forward to the to the conversation and questions. And I'll stop sharing my screen. Well, th well thank you, Yasmin and Grant, so much. I think that was really insightful. It's always um, interesting to hear the stories that you share and the lessons that you've learned. Um, and a lot of things that we take for granted as like um, as uh, Native Canadians, I guess is the correct term. Um, so, but before we open the floor to questions, I'd like to let everyone know that we do record these sessions and we post them on our website the following week. You're usually able to get them up about midweek next week. Um, so they you can find them under the education tab on our website. And also a quick reminder that we do have one rule for all um, people asking questions, which is the same rule that we have for our presenters. And that is no sales pitches. Um, so that includes any statements disguised as questions as well. So we're going to open the floor to uh, a few questions right now. A reminder to use the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen, or you can raise your hand and I can unmute you and you can ask your own question. Um, and you can use the chat just for general chatter. Um, a first question I wanted to ask is, what are, you mentioned a few of them, but I'm wondering, um, I know Yasmin, when you came on uh, before you mentioned, um, and one of my favorite stories is when um, people or newcomers to Canada don't realize that a thermostat is something that they can actually change. Which yeah. Com makes complete sense when you actually think about it. Of course, like, why would you think that this thing on your wall is something that you can actually touch and move? I'm wondering yeah. if you have any other, or Grant, feel free to jump in here too, any like aha moments or just kind of like, wow, that makes so much sense moments that you've had over the years in your work. Yeah, I think the... Uh it's kind of related to the service there, but I think what we see, especially in the rental market, is that immigrants and newcomers tend to be, there's a real power dynamic with landlords that maybe uh, for native Canadians, we know our right, we're more familiar with our rights as renters. And I think that doesn't hold true in the immigrant and newcomer market. And so unfortunately we see a lot of unscrupulous landlords taking advantage of that. And so, you know, we, when people are scared to touch a thermostat, it's because, you know, they don't want their landlord to get mad at them. The worst thing that could happen for them is to get evicted and they don't have a sense of what it would take to get evicted. So things like, you know, if their furnace is broken or they're seeing things in their home, it's not as easy for them to push back on their landlords as it may be for others. So that is certainly something that, you know, it's, it's really heartbreaking actually to hear some of the stories. Uh, and when people say, you know, my landlord will turn up the heat and they won't fix the furnace and they don't want to push back. They don't want to call the landlord and say, you know, you need to do this. So that's, that's certainly a challenge. Yeah, I would say so. Grant, just uh, before we move to the next question, just see if there's anything you want to add to that. Uh, I can just add to Yasmin's comments on the 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 naming of heat pumps, and you know, mm -hmm. funny enough, through our marketing that we've been doing, we've been you know kind of passing around the ideas of trying to integrate a more a name that really explains what it does as a unit a little more because you know 
being called a heat pump, a lot of people don't understand that it does provide cooling. And through these summer months, we're you know up against that as a main concern here in BC. So, you know, maybe in the future as we move forward, we'll be able to add some uh, additional defining terms to that language so people can understand it and and not just newcomers to BC and and our multi multicultural aspects, but even you know our English speaking clientele don't, don't understand that it provides cooling. So good point. I think um, Yasmin, we learned that at the um, Google presentation that even Google with their smart thermostat, that was something that they changed the name of their smart thermostat to more like a right. complete home because they were finding it was alienating people be because it's smart. And if you didn't have right. a smart thermostat, you were like implying that people were stupid, which is definitely not the case and not the message that they wanted to give off. Yeah. So even even that was so even Google gets it wrong sometimes. Yeah, wording is so important. I totally agree. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I see that there's a, a question here actually um, from uh, David Katz is, um, do the many languages that the RET screen offer help your efforts on the efficiency me uh, measures at all? I'm not sure if you um, with that. No, not totally. Um, yeah, the, the so a lot of the work that we do in different languages is really around consumer education um, and energy literacy. So any sort of technology, if they're going, if they're getting energy advisors uh, and Hot 2000 or any other, um, we would support them and concierge uh, them through that. Perfect. And another question here um, from a different Dave is, uh, I liked the education before recruitment point. Can you elaborate, so probably for Yasmin, mm. on how you're putting this into practice and comment on the time lag between when you convert a participant in the education event a slash communication point to a scheduling a home energy audit assessment? Yeah, um, it really depends. I hate saying that answer, but we, uh, so we, have workshops we do about one a week in different languages um, where we where we put we basically provide two hours of education um, to help people understand how their home uses energy what their energy bills are sort of like energy literacy 101 and in that we start to talk about and you know the government has these programs and this is what rebates are and this is how they work um, and then we support them ongoing so as they um need to or want to upgrade their homes we will help with translation and support i think what we find in the immigrant community is that any upgrades to homes usually happen when equipment breaks it's not we haven't seen a whole lot of um, um motivation to undertake upgrades before that happens so it really depends but but if people understand that oh you know my furnace has a 10-year life cycle they're able to plan you know maybe next year they're going to have to take advantage of a program so sorry to give the it depends answer but it depends <laughs> and grant do you want to jump in there as well uh, i could i could just add that you know currently with the greener homes program um getting energy advisors into the home is a is a drawn up process so Unfortunately, people in our province um, need to be patient and we'll work with them as best we can to help them stick handle the process um, with Empower Me support. Thank you for that. I think that's an important note as well. Um, uh, energy advisors are, are hard working for sure right now and they're, they're ramping up as much as they can, but it is um, planned to be a seven year uh, funding program. So that's, that's what we kind of have to remind people that it's not one of these like quick one year, you only have this year to do it and, and you're done, that it, it is planned to be seven years. So even if it ends early at five years, it's still, you know, there is time although everyone wants to be efficient with their energy efficiency, of course, pardon the, the bad pun there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, a question here from Richard is, how can contractors engage with Empower Me to help facilitate the design, installation, and delivery of these energy services or upgrades? So what sort of vetting, if any, does uh, Empower Me or Clean BC provide? 
Grant, do you want to take the vetting of the contractors? Yeah, um, you know, obviously our energy coaching uh, service is probably a, a perfect solution for contractors to reach out to. Um, initial calls could be made to our general line, which is available on our Better Homes website. And then if they're needing additional language support, they would then be passed over to Empower Me for that support. Um, we haven't gone to the point where we're doing full translation of marketing materials but there is some high level materials available and they are on our website so we would probably push people through to our website and as we grow we hope to develop more informational pieces in multiple languages that could be distributed for contractors to use for for uh, program information and just to add to that, so Empower Me will provide that information to the resident and let them know that these are the contractors on Clean BC's website. However, lots of times we find that the community wants to use a contractor that they know that's in their community that speaks their language, which makes total sense. Um, but, um, but we will let them know, you know, if they're not registered, the, these are the risks that you're taking and, you know, whether they, it's their choice at the end of the day, whether they want to do that, we'll support them any, any way, either way. Just a, a question for you, Yasmin, is um, you have just a wide range of nationalities um, that you've hired, that you work with. I'm mm. actually curious, like um, one of the challenges that I've heard from a lot of people and over these presentations is like, where do you find these team members? Like, where can you, where can you hire them? That's the secret magic sauce. Yeah. <laughs> like it's taken us 10 years, you know, it, it's a long time. I think it really has, because we have a very solid reputation in the community. We've been there um, continuously, which, you know, some energy efficiency programs are sort of in and out of the market. Because we've been there, because we hire from the community and we have a very solid relationship with all of the community groups, that's kind of the magic. But it's certainly, it is like the linchpin. It is the key. You need to have amazing people on your team. Um, and I know some of them are on the call today, so they know who they are. And, um, yeah, they are, they are the heart and soul of the program. You know, it, we're so lucky to have them. And, so, and actually, lots of them go on to really great careers in other parts of the industry. I know, so, uh, you know, we're always writing letters of recommendation. So it's really, it's, yeah, it's magic. I'm actually, if there is anyone on the presentation today, feel free to add to the chat, like, why, like, why and how you engage with Empower Me and what made you want to join them. I'm just be curious about that so that other people can kind of um, join in and, and see there and um, we'll share that later on as well. Um, I have a question here as well. So another one for you, Yasmin, but feel free to jump in as well, Grant, is um, what Empower Me does seems to be focused on literacy. Is there anything that can be done to alleviate the financial burden of retrofits like replacing windows or insulation uh, for low income households, oftentimes the rebates don't cover a lot of these costs. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> um, there is lots, yeah, there's lots that can be done. Um, we just have to do them. So, you know, there's lots of great programs in BC. Um, Clean BC has a, an upcoming program as well that fully, will be fully subsidized. So, certainly that's part of our world. You know, with lots of newcomers and immigrants. Um, unfortunately are struggling with energy poverty. So whether we suggest that they take advantage of um, a, a traditional rebate where they have to pay, or we direct them to, you know, ECAP or ESK, um, we, because we have such a good relationship with these communities and not me specifically, but our mentors, communities sort of know which families in their communities are struggling. And, you know, there is, embarrassment and shame around admitting that um but because we have a good connection we're able to to signpost them to the right places and i also think there's you know for immigrant and newcomer communities a lot of canadians you know they're battling against that thing of you know don't take uh advantage of social programs you know um, the quote immigrants are drawn our social uh programs so there's very much they're very hesitant, I think, sometimes to take advantage of social programs because they don't want to be seen as a as a as taking unfair the benefit. The yeah. stigma, exactly. So having a trusted relationship with them is very important. And yeah, that was a long winded answer to that. But. I'm if I can add as well, there, yeah. there is some, sorry, 
Go ahead, Nana. I was just going to say that there are some opportunities for them to stack the better homes and the greener homes offers as well right now. Yeah. Um, it's a great opportunity. Often the uh, values of that can nearly cover their upgrades. Um, it is a bit of a convoluted process and there is some confusion currently, but we're getting answers from Enercan on their program. And we are updating our website with um, some frequently asked questions and we will be be providing contractors with some information on how they can present those offers and really kind of the step-by-step -step processes for them to get through both programs. So there will be great opportunities to participate in both programs, get funding to really help them move forward in that process. I, just one more thing to add to that as Grant was talking, I think sometimes there's very much an assumption that immigrants and newcomers are low income. And that is really, a really big assumption that we don't always see. Yes, there are immigrants and newcomers that are low income, but there are certainly lots of immigrants and newcomers who have the financial ability to make significant upgrades in their homes. They just don't know that that's a thing that they could or should do. So I wanted to say that to make sure that we're not, you know, just to keep in mind that um, not every newcomer and uh, an immigrant is low income. Yeah, definitely. I'm no. actually curious if people do have questions just about like, what can I do with my home? What, like, who should they reach out to and, and where can they go? They can go to our website and uh, reach out to us. There's lots of different ways, lots of different languages. Um, um, uh, God, I can't believe I can't think of this. So, uh, energychampion.ca. Oh my God, Kareem would kill me. <laughs> um, they, uh, so they can reach out to us there. Um, if you want more, oh, Green just texted me, support.empowerme.ca. <laughs> I knew I'd get that wrong. Support.empowerme.ca. Uh, people can go there to find more information. If you know of any community member who needs help, we're also um, work in Alberta too. So if any Albertans need support, happy to help there. Of course, we're talking about BC today, but. Um, Yes, and I see a, a just a question in the chat. Yes, and the mentors take the homeowners through the application processes. Yes, well, that's a huge piece. We um, those application processes are not easy, um, and especially, like I said, especially if you don't speak English, um, there's it's hard. People need to understand what is the question asking. Why is the government asking me this? What is the answer? Am I making sure I'm writing it down well? You know, there's a real uh, focus on making sure those answers are accurate. Definitely. And I'm just gonna. Um, I saw Kareem posted the the link in the <laughs> website. So not only did he he text you, he posted it in the website. He's, he's on it. Anyway, yeah. So which is great. <laughs> super. Very helpful. Um, I'm actually just curious for both of you. I like to ask one last question at the end here is if you could leave um, everyone with one last message uh, today that you hope people took away from your presentation. I'm curious, what would that message be? So Yasmin, yours have a lot to say. I'm going to challenge a you. <laughs> I, I can go. I, I'd love to go first because I feel like we might say the same thing. <laughs> um, you know, I just want to, you know, just make this clear that, you know, the Clean BC Better Homes program is inclusive of all British Columbians. And we really have a focus to make sure that no matter where you are, who you are, and what region, there is access to this information. There is help to support you getting through this program. And, and you know, we want to help you succeed in getting your home more efficient and getting an up to date with, uh, you know, a more a more efficient but um, cost effective solution for your for your operation of your home as well. So, you know, it's a great opportunity. We're happy to be provided providing this service and happy to be working with Empower Me. So, thank you. I would I totally agree with Grant. The the other thing I'll say is that aside from an equity and inclusion point of view we're not going to hit our target climate goals if we don't include everyone and a very large percentage of the canadian population is currently left out of climate programming and we need to consider them not only you know just because that's who we are as canadians but because we need to upgrade their homes and we need them to upgrade their homes so 
Yeah, definitely great points there and great, and great ways to end it. So thank you for that. Thank you, Yasmin. Thank you, Grant. Um, have a fantastic weekend. And uh, as mentioned, we'll be taking a break for discovery sessions for the month of August, but you can sign up to join our popular unprofessional networking series happening during uh, the usual Friday Eastern time noon spot. Um, so happy weekend, everyone. Have a fantastic August and take care. Bye-bye.